from Craft Me a Card, and I love crafting for the crafter, and that is you. I have a very special little fairy to share with you today, created with, of course, natural pressed flowers. Using different kinds of flowers, I went ahead and I created her. And this is going to be sent to Liana um, with my entry for her birthday challenge over at It's a Deal. So first what I do, of course, is create the body of the fairy. I go ahead and I die cut her out and I put her body together, her hair, her eyes, and then I just set her aside. So I go through my box here and um, I pull out certain kinds of flowers. I believe these are gladiolas. And the side of enjoying working with these natural pressed flowers, I have found myself that I am becoming more familiar and recognizing certain types of flowers and learning their names even. So anyways, I just pick and choose different types of flowers that will fit on this fairy. This one here that you're seeing me cut is the petal of a carnation. And just by adding some silicone glue, some hot glue, I go ahead and I assemble her little outfit and also adhering her wings to her back. And I go ahead and I add a little dab of silicone glue right under her wing just to lift it up a little bit and give a little bit of dimension. And here she is, so very cute. I decide to add a flower crown to her hair to help her be more magical and more fairy-like. I really enjoy working with tiny pieces. Needless to say, I'm really enjoying working with tiny flowers. So I create this wreath using my tiniest flowers <laughs> available to me. And um, I have to say there is a particularly favorite one. It's the ones you see here on the sides, the blue ones. And I only have two of these teeny weeny little ones that were in the middle of a hydrangea flower. I don't know how the hydrangea created it, but it is very, very special, unique. And um, I haven't been able to find this little teeny weeny little flower in the middle of the other hydrangeas that I have pressed so far. But I thought that this fairy was very worthy of having these little unique pieces. So carefully adding little dabs of silicone glue, I went ahead and I added these flowers to her wreath. So special. I bring in my card base and I go ahead and I select a card stock that goes with her. And I think that this metallic purple is perfect. It's the same uh, color as her wings. So I go ahead and I place my card base onto it. And using a crafter's knife, I cut around it. So now I, I feel that this background, this first layer is a little too plain and I want some more texture to this card. So I go ahead and I bring some texture paste. Um, I don't want it white, I want some color to it. So you can add color to texture paste. And in this case, I bring in some Distress Oxide inks. First, I start off with shaded lilac on a piece of glass. I add a little bit of ink, bring in some texture paste, and I mix it in with this color. And you could add color to your white texture paste with any kind of ink that you might have. And I also wanted this texture paste to have little darker hints of this color. So all I did was sweep up some of that color with the texture paste without mixing it in too much. And that creates like certain swirls of darker color, helping this background have more of like a whimsical look, a funner look, something different. So I just go ahead and I apply this texture paste with this color onto the edges of my card base because I know my fairy is going to go right in the middle. Okay, so once I get a glimpse of how this is going to look with uh, shaded lilac, I decide that it still needed more pop of color. So that's when I bring in wilted violet, which is a darker kind of purple. And I go ahead using the same technique of grabbing the texture paste and sweeping the ink off the block. I go ahead and I apply it onto the card without mixing the texture paste with the color so that we could get those swirls, those pops of colors here and there and everywhere on the background. So the fun thing of texture paste is that it will dry dimensional. Wherever you leave a, like a little peak, um, it will dry like that. So I like it, it gives it a lot of uh, different textures. Off camera, I went ahead and I die cut this frame and the square that goes right in the middle of it. And using some distressed ink, and this is antique linen, so I went ahead and with a dauber, I distressed the edges, just adding a little bit of color to the edges of both these die cuts. 
So I decide to uh, use a different technique in distressing paper and this is simply by uh, taking a blade to the edge of the paper. It just rips it and it creates a more distressed look that makes it look a little bit more grungier. And you can either use a crafter's knife for this or a distressing tool. They give the same effect. <laughs> and like the core of the paper is white, I go ahead and I add a little bit of that antique linen again with the dauber to the edges of it. And here just visualizing how this is going to end up, I go ahead and I decide to leave the square that goes in the middle flush for my fairy to go right on top of it, but I decide that the frame needs to be popped up. So I go ahead and I get some foam adhesive, cut little strips, and I add it to the back of my frame using some liquid glue before and after the foam to adhere it to the card base. And since the square will not be popped up, I just go ahead and I add some glue directly onto it and I position it right in the middle of this frame. Using whiteout, you have seen me use this in the past and I use it differently in my craft room. I go ahead and I add some splats to the background. And this is a nice way to add a different look, a different texture and make your projects look a little more artsy. I want this fairy to be a little bit popped up. So again, grabbing some foam adhesive, I go ahead and I pop her up. Bringing in my hot glue again, I go ahead and I stick my fairy right in the middle of the card. I wanted to add some more sparkle to her, so bringing in some stickles, I went ahead and I added some glitter to her wings and skirt. Off camera, I stamped on photo paper because I wanted it to have a little bit of shine. Leave a little sparkle wherever you go. And I punched it out of a tag punch that I have and I just added a little piece of ribbon to it and I adhered it onto the card. I felt that sequin would be perfect for this card and indeed, I wanted a little bit more sparkle and shine. So I added some iridescent sequin using julet glue. And you see me using also my wax pencil to apply these on. Also off camera, I cut corners using the same metallic paper and I adhere them to each corner. And here she is. I think this card came out beautiful. I really had a hard time letting go of this card, especially this fairy. But I think Liana will appreciate her as much as I do. So this is my share for today. I hope that you get inspired. I hope you create and be happy. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hit the notification bell, like, and comment. All these things motivate me to keep bringing you crafty content. Thank you so much and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Got it on my blouse and it's black. Crud. Oops, right there, bottom. Oops. Super cute.